My name is Stephen Pierce, and I'm the Public Communications Officer for Solano County. And tonight I'll be talking about the Farm Budsman Program and performance measures for that, and how can the funders and users of the Farm Budsman Program use them to determine how effective the program is. This study is actually a follow-up to the Food and Shade Cluster Study that examined the agricultural industry in Solano County and Yolo County. And that study led to the Solano and Yolo County's Joint Economic Summit that was held in November 2011. One of the action areas of that summit was to create a bi-county agricultural ombudsman program to help farmers navigate the permitting process. Now this is not a knock on the permitting process in and of itself. The process is most efficient with the expert customer. And if you only get a permit once or twice in your lifetime, you don't have the opportunity to gain experience. And the concept is that this ombudsman would become that smart customer and in partnership with the farmer. Now the folks who working, are working on this project, they have since adopted the term farm ombudsman for agricultural ombudsman. It's a little easier to say. Uh, and the, whole con the concept behind it is not new. Solano County had a similar program, but when the recession hit, the funding was cut. And this concept of having an outsider to bridge the gap between farmers and regulators has emerged in several agricultural forums over the last decade. And they've been incorporated in the general plan of both counties. But what makes this latest effort distinctive is that the funding and the oversight will come from a public-private partnership. The partnership is still under construction, and there are going to be some challenges with multiple funding streams and potentially competing interest. What this study asks is if they build it, how do we measure it? As I mentioned earlier, Farm Budsman helps farmers through the permitting process. And you would think, given the prominence of agriculture in this country, that there would be a lot of literature out there about helping farmers and through the permitting process, the Farm Budsman, Agriculture Budsman. No, there's not. I couldn't find any and neither could the librarian at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. She couldn't find it either. So I had to try and figure out what's like an ombudsman, or like a farm ombudsman. And if you think of traditional ombudsmans, it's about complaint management and advocacy. That didn't fit, uh, because this is about the navigator role. So as I continued research, I decided that the farm ombudsman program most closely aligns with a business assistance program. In that environment, there was a lot of discussion about whether you can measure the quality and the effectiveness of these kinds of programs. Given all these outside influences, some suggested that you can only measure the client's perspective on the value of the service provided. And those who wanted quantifiable numbers about jobs created and uh, increased sales emitted, you kind of have to manipulate the numbers to count for only that portion that really has a direct link to the services provided. One of the other issues that came out was that clients could be very satisfied with the outcome, but give low marks on the actual services being graded. And that's because, this disconnect comes because when you came in for this business assistance program, you said, I want X. But as the process progressed, you realized what you really needed was Y. The business assistance programs, the way they're set up, often continue to grade X, so they get low marks. And so when it was all said and done, I discovered measuring a business assistance program isn't easy, and quite often they get it wrong. Oops, too fast. This isn't going the right direction. It's the other way. Yeah. Let's go with that. No. As part of my research, I interviewed two individuals who made up the former Solano County Ombudsman Program, the farm coordinator, and the principal agricultural planner. I also talked to the Ag Commissioners in Solano County and in Marin County. And I chose Marin County because they've had the farm, a farm Busman program, or similar to our Farm Busman program, proposed for about a decade. The second information gathering tool was a survey that sought to understand the perceptions of those in the agriculture community. Those questions explored the attributes of a farmer, a farm Busman, a respondent's knowledge of the former Solano County program, their expectations on the purpose of a farm ombudsman program, and some understanding about how they kind of viewed the possible strategies that could be used to measure this program in two different counties. Now, because this study is a follow-up to the Joint Economic Summit, I used the nearly 130 attendees as a convenient sample for the farm ombudsman survey. And that audience included people from government, academia, 
uh, business, the financial community, and the farming community. Now, farmers and ranchers participated in the summit, but they really weren't enough to give the survey a preponderance uh, of uh, heavy weight on the responses. So I pushed it out to a variety of agricultural organizations in Yellow and Solano County. That strategy worked. Of the total 90 responses, farmers and ranchers uh, accounted for 60%. The thought process behind these questions that I asked actually came from, from a brainstorming session with the Yellow and Food Ag Alliance. And they had this meeting in preparation for the last time to go for their board of supervisors to say yes to the program. And at that meeting, which included representatives from Solano County, they came up with all of these great reasons why we should have a farm buzzing program. And those responses were incorporated into the study, into the survey. The respondents, however, in taking it, made distinctions that weren't noticed or weren't present at the, surf, at the brainstorming session. And as you can tell from the slide, the respondents agreed overwhelmingly that the farm ombudsman should speak multiple languages, some farmees and regulatories, educate both sides about how to be smarter with the, what the other one does, understand what the, and be comfortable with the regulator in the farming world. The red line is at the 85 percentile. That was my mark of being able to say, have we reached strong support? And as it goes farther and farther down from that, then it was looking at the respondents, the comments, to see, to kind of give a flavor in the direction in which that was really going. The respondents here were not clearly as uh, thrilled with things, but I call the consultant role. And the questions weren't separated into navigator and consultant roles. The, the, the survey respondents, their answers kind of seg segregated in that role. And uh, when you start reading in the, the, the commentary, the, it kind of set up the rationale for why that was the right thing. Their answers suggested that the attributes could be best classified as job duties, and the others could be described as skill sets that would enhance their ability to be a navigator. One of my concerns going into this program is that there wasn't a lot of knowledge about the Solano County program, and that would create false expectations. As I did the literature review, it showed that the Farm Busman program concept has been out there a lot in a lot of different ways, so the idea wasn't based clearly on Solano County. But as you can tell, in the big gray area, there's a lot of unknowns about the program. Now, I did not ask whether they were from Yellow or Solano County, so I can't tell you if there is a uh, location bias. When I asked the question specifically about the purposes you know, of the proposed farm busman program, 94% agreed with the statement that a farm busman program should assist the agriculture community in navigating the various regulatory agencies. And any of the other questions that fell into the navigator role, there was good support. But as you can see here, once again, the enthusiasm for the consultant role wasn't nearly as good. Now, admittedly, there's a fair amount of uncertainty when they're looking about what these roles are going to be, and that was actually greater among the farmer and rancher community. But their comments, like the uh, attributes, underscored the concern that the consultant role would be a distraction. That kind of stumped me at first because when you looked at the, uh, from the key informants and I looked at the work activity of the farm uh, coordinator, all the things that were on that purpose list was what that farm coordinator that we had in Solano County was doing at the client's request. But if you kind of looked at beyond the individual transactions, kind of put them in sequence, you started to realize that many of those things that were falling in the consult role, the farm coordinator really was doing that and supporting that effort to be a navigator. Another kind of question asked was, sh who should benefit from the farm budget program? It specifically asked if the purpose was to reduce the administrative burden on the regulatory agency. Two subgroups were very, had the least support of that work, farmers and ranchers at 45%, and government agencies at 60%. They also said no. And what, when you looked at the comments, what they were saying is, it's a byproduct program, but not a purpose. Another thing that I found that was surprising was the degree in which the respondents thought there was a need for the farm busman program or the ability for the program to serve both Yolo and Solano County. 82% agreed that there was a demand, but when you looked at farmers, only 73%. And when you looked at could it serve both counties, overall that was only 67%. Among farmers, only 59%. 
when I asked about the strategies, you know, nobody hit that threshold of 85%. But as you kind of move down to the point where the more information you had to extract from the client to determine what the farm budsman did was valuable, the less desirable the performance measure became. Essentially, what, they're, what I kind of put that into being is that they didn't want the output of the farmer to measure the input of the farm budsman. So after weeks of this careful research, I concluded that measuring a farm budsman program is as challenging as evaluating a traditional business assistance program. We cannot follow the federal model of setting national standards and assuming naturally that that would coincide with the needs of the uh, client. The survey suggests the reverse is actually more likely to be true. So my recommendations to that public-private partnership is that working on creating this farm budsman program is to stay focused on the navigator role. A successful farm budsman will help expand the agriculture industry as well as provide improved operational efficiencies for the regulatory agency. The reality is clients who come in knowing what they want and know how to take and what it takes to get there take less staff time than those who change their mind after every visit. The farm budsman will make smarter customers. I recommend that the primary types of performance measures should be subjective measures and that focus on the work of that yet-to-be-defined work plan. A post-interaction survey could uh, get, gather the information about the client's perceived value of the services, the overall services, not just what they came in for, and their interaction with the regulatory agency. An annual survey of the overall agricultural community will help measure whether the counties are achieving what was a second action area of the Joint Economic Summit to transfer the role of <coughs> government from regulator to partner. The Farm Budsman should also track activity and projects and report this monthly to a joint Farm Budsman Oversight Committee. This report should include information as the number of client interactions, the type of outcomes from those actions, and the status of projects working their way through the system. And a synopsis of that information should be included in the annual crop reports in each county. Now this committee would be not just be responsible for monitoring the Farm Budsman's performance, but they would be developing common strategies to improve regulatory processes related to agriculture, suggesting that the membership should include a supervisor from each county, the two ag commissioners, the two department heads from the two planning departments, and four representatives from agriculture, two from each county. And lastly, one farm busman serving two counties would be hard pressed to be a jack of all trades like our farm coordinator was, and stay focused on that core navigational role. Clients are going to be asked for, are going to ask for those consultant services. So I'm suggesting that the farm budsman work with the UC Cooperative Extension, the Small Business Development Center, and other agricultural service providers, local, state, and federal, to kind of provide this menu of services and programs, kind of a plug and play, plug and play approach with a little hand holding along the way. That concludes my discussion of the farm budsman program. I'll be glad to answer any easy questions. <laughs>